it seems paradoxical, but I am actually going to talk about silence. And even more paradoxical, my assertion is going to be that there is no such thing as silence. We'll get to that gradually. The story starts with my grandfather, who I didn't know very well. He was quite old uh, when I was young, and I, I don't have many memories of him, but one of the things I remember vividly was he had this farm, and the farm was extremely noisy. Uh, my grandfather was a politician. He spent most of his time in New York, but every weekend and every evening, if he could, he would go back to the farm, and he would work with the cows and the pigs and the sheep and the goats and everything. And as you can imagine, it was quite noisy. It was a bustling, hustling, active place. And so at some point, my grandfather had this sign made, this little hand-painted wooden sign. Now, he didn't have his own library, but he had the sign made. And the sign says his name. And most of all, it says in big letters, silence. And was there a silence on the farm? Probably not. Did he find silence? Well, we'll talk about that more. I'm a musician. I spend most of my time performing or thinking about music or making podcasts. I'm doing my dissertation here at the University of Leiden in the Humanities Department on markers for silence. So I spend a lot of time thinking about the philosophical aspects of silence, the existence of silence, definitions of silence, and what it means to be silent or to experience silence. But actually, that's not so unusual. Pretty much any musician spends a lot of time working with silence. If you didn't have silence, you would just have notes, and that would end up probably being noise. So you have to have some silence. Silence in music is kind of like the punctuation marks the periods, the commas, the semicolons of musical speech. So thinking about silence is kind of what I do. And I want to tell you something very important now about silence. OK, that was about 10 seconds of silence. Was it really silence? Did you hear anything? Well, you probably did. I see people nodding their heads. I heard plenty. I'll tell you what I heard. I heard a little bit of street noise. I heard sounds of people back there. I heard the rustling of something. It might perhaps be the ventilation system. And I heard the sound of the beamer. And if I'd listened longer, I would have heard more and more things. So let me do another little experiment with you. Do you hear anything? I'm communicating with you. I didn't make any noise. But you were probably focused on me trying to figure out what I was saying. Was that silence? Communication is very much going on. I'm using my mouth. I'm gesturing. I'm using lots of different ways to be in touch with you in this space, in this context. And you're using your eyes and hopefully your ears to try to figure out what's he saying now, what's going on now. So why is that second experience of silence so different from the first one? If I just stand here frozen, that's a very different thing than if I stand here pretending to talk or mouthing the words. And so it's something that I'm constantly looking at because the more you delve into this sort of distinction, the more complex the issue of silence becomes. And then we have to ask ourselves, why are we silent? In the introduction, you were asked to be quiet. You were asked to turn off your cell phones. Now, what are reasons to be silent? Well, you might be silent, one, because you want to hear better. You might be silent for a second reason. You want to concentrate. What is the speaker saying? But there's a third reason, and this really intrigues me. There is a sort of cultural expectation that says, when is silence and now is silence for you, not for me. I can stand here and make as much noise as I want. You have a cultural expectation, a sort of an obligation right now to be silent because that's showing your respect for the speaker. But 
if I were a rock star and I came out with a big electric guitar and started playing and you were silent, I'd be furious. So the cultural expectation of silence, as soon as you start to look at it, is extremely artificial and extremely arbitrary. It depends on the context. And here in this context, you're being silent to react appropriately to me. But it just goes to show that as much as someone like me, for example, is interested in silence, it doesn't mean that silence is necessarily always a good idea. Sometimes it's a terrible idea. So keep that in mind during my talk. I'm promoting and I'm examining, examining issues of silence, but that doesn't mean that we all need silence, and certainly not all the time. Now, what about this video? There's something funny about this. Lots of people are now going to have trouble concentrating on what I'm saying because they hear the sound of the pylon hitting the ground. And this is such a fascinating thing. There have been several scientific studies on this. Why does this work? And nobody seems to know, and it doesn't work for everybody. But about 45% of the people in this audience are hearing the sound of that right now. And it is distracting them from what I'm saying. And so there's something quite fascinating about this. I guarantee you there is no sound. The laptop is not hooked up to the speakers. And there's no sound in the video anyway. But it gives the impression that there's a sound. So this, again, shows how much our brains are hardwired for sound. Sound is really important to us, and when something is silent, often we add the sounds that we expect or that we think we need. This always makes me laugh. It's another silly, another silly image. Uh, for anyone who's a musician, of course, the top suggests silence immediately, and the bottom suggests music or maybe noise or chaos, whatever it is. It's super clear. Again, a visual example of how silence can be communicated quite, quite quickly in terms of musical language. But like I said before, we don't really necessarily all need silence. Silence is something that comes up a lot and came up a lot more during COVID. And for me, this was a really fertile creative period because there were so many new ideas about silence, about isolation, about being alone that came up during the lockdowns because the world was quieter. The world was much quieter. We had much more birdsong. We had far fewer uh, airplanes, less traffic, and all these things created a world which, for me, was richer and more fulfilling, but not for everybody, obviously. So with, uh, this is a good example. This shows Paris during the lockdown. On the right, you see the green. Green is good levels of sound, and the red is typical what normally happens on any given day in a big urban area is that you have an incredible amount of traffic and other noise, which is red in this case is dangerously level. So this is what we're, we're used to, a kind of dangerous level of noise in our lives. And COVID, for a moment or two, got rid of that, which was probably a good thing for us. But that's over. So are we still looking for silence? Some people are. And these clocks are very funny because these clocks cost a little bit extra than regular clocks because there's no tick-tock. So, lots of people do want silence. Maybe they want silence when they sleep. Maybe they want silence all day long. And some people go to a monastery for silence. And you would say, okay, a monastery is quiet. A monastery is a place where you can really experience silence. Not true, not true. A monastery is often very noisy, and one of the things about monasteries is that they also often have a lot of animals, just like my grandfather did, and they might have cows and sheep and goats and all the other things, and all those make a lot of noise, and then you have to, you know, take care of them, and you're constantly moving back and forth, and there's a lot of action and a lot of things going on, and plus, you have the bells. Almost any monastery, particularly a European monastery, but it could also be in Tibet, has a lot of bells, and the bells are going probably all day long. And so, in fact, a monastery may or may not be a place to experience silence. It's more like being inside of a clock, a clock that very much does go tick and tock. So, do we find silence in a forest? You could but then you have the birds, you have the wind, you have the sound of perhaps running water, you have all kinds of things, the rustling of the leaves and the trees. Silence in a forest is also difficult to find. 
What about silence in the desert? This is a desert where a friend of mine went in Chile, and it really is silent. There's no noise, there are no animals, there's no wind. It's completely quiet. But as soon as you start to walk, your feet on the、uh, salt go scrunch, scrunch, scrunch. So you become the problem. You are in a silent place. The world around you is silent, but you are now the problem because you are creating a problem just by experiencing it. So, this raises such an interesting kind of problem, and there is a solution to this. A solution to this is what's called an anechoic chamber. If you go to an anechoic chamber, and this one is at the、uh, European Space Agency, not so far from here, this is an enormous room. You can drive a truck with a satellite on it. Into this room, and you can park the satellite and you can do testing on it. The walls are covered with these foam, these blue foam wedges, and the foam wedges absorb the sound and they don't reflect it back. Furthermore, the room itself is like a room within a room, a concrete box on springs. It's totally isolated from the outside world. No sound gets out, no sound gets in. This is another smaller one where I've done a lot of research. This was in Hilversum at the radio, and again, these big foam wedges. But it's a very strange experience because there is no sound, no external sound. It's rather disorienting. And you have the same problem you did in the desert because your body is making sounds all the time. And you only discover that when you're in one of these places, the quietest places on earth. You suddenly hear the sound of your heart beating, the sound of the nerves in your brain. You hear all kinds of things. You hear yourself breathing. And it is very disorienting and sometimes a little bit weird to be in this space. You have maybe work to do, things to measure, microphones to test, but your body is interfering with the silence. So, what about silence in outer space? Is this our answer? Yes and no. In outer space, there's no air. Consequently, sound waves cannot propagate. They don't exist out there. There is no sound. So, in outer space, it is silent. But can we experience it? No. We can't experience it because we would have to be dead to be out there. Otherwise, we're in a spacesuit and we have all the sounds of the spacesuit. So, that is again another example of how it's not really there, what we're looking for. But, Because I'm intrigued, in this, intrigued by this, and because I've worked a bit with the space agency, I got involved in a project to do artwork, which would go up into space. A very, very tiny artwork. And I was asked to be part of this. This is a, what's called the Moon Gallery, it is a museum in space. And my artwork is in there,、uh, that one. And each one of these is one cubic centimeter, or extremely tiny, because it's very, very expensive to send things up into space. And so I thought, oh, I'll make a musical instrument, and I'll make something that will make sound, but also be kind of about silence, and, you know, like take apart a piano and make a miniature version, and it'll have little machines in it. And、uh, that was completely impractical. You cannot actually do that. So、uh, I had to kind of start over. And I said, okay, so I can't do the musical instrument in the little box, but what can I do? And I came up with this idea that you could play with microgravity. Because on the space station, there's almost no gravity, but there's a little tiny bit, maybe one sixth of the gravity here on Earth. And so things float around and they bump into each other. And I thought, ah, now that's interesting. What if you make something that's passive? It doesn't have its own machine or batteries or anything. And It moves, and as it moves, it makes little tiny sounds which nobody can hear. I thought that's, that's a good thing to play around with silence. So that's a very short version of how I came up with this. These are five tiny, tiny spheres, extremely small. The biggest one is four millimeters in diameter. And they are now on the, they went up on the 17th of February, launched from Virginia at a NASA facility, and they are now on the space station, floating around in space, over our heads every hour and a half,、uh, extremely high speeds around the Earth. And they'll come back down in a couple of months. And at some point, these artworks may eventually go to the moon. So I don't want to leave you with the impression that. 
there is no such thing as silence and therefore it's not worth looking for or appreciating or understanding or experiencing. Quite the contrary, I think silence is extremely important and I think we should look for it in our lives and try to find it. But I think that it's also important to be conscious of the fact that we can't get a real silence. There is no perfect silence. Rather, we should look in our lives for something which might be called calm or inner peace, another way of describing silence, a silence for ourselves, a silence that's actually obtainable. And I think uh, always of this sign. This is at a nature reserve in Zeeland, which I really love, and it is a quiet area. Now, quiet area doesn't mean quiet. There are seagulls, there's a lot of noise from the sea itself, the waves, the wind is extremely high there. You are always sort of being buffeted by the elements. It is a very active place. But it is a very quiet place if you experience it that way, and I do. And so I think in the end, sort of experiencing silence is more about finding the silence behind the noise the silence behind our everyday lives. And COVID showed that to us, that there was a silence which was not so far away. And I think that, if anything, is probably the silence we should be looking for. And that, of course, at least I hope, is what my grandfather found. Thank you very much. <laughs>